your fan, was your family always in Worcester, or how, how yep. did your family come to um, I grew up in Worcester. My mom was born and grew up in Worcester. My dad came from Somersworth, New Hampshire, oh. which is just over the line. That must be an interesting story how they met. Yeah, um, actually, they both had family friends that they both were in, but they didn't realize that it all came together. Oh, so they, they met through family friends. Yes, yeah. Great way. Yeah. Now, um, so you were born in Worcester. What year were you born in? 1947. Oh, okay. So you would have been about seven years old during the tornado. Mm -hmm. So you were about Oh, yeah. I remember because uh, <laughs> my poor mom, she was upstairs. And she was just doing her thing of curling her hair for the next day and everything. And all of a sudden, my dad came flying in the house and he called her. He said, you need to get down in the basement right now. I've got Kathy. And he waited like five seconds and he didn't hear anything. She calls, well, I need to fix it. He says, you're not going to have any hair left on your head if you don't get down south. So it's very important for you to come down right now. And he didn't tell her what it was. He just said, you, it, you have to get down here right now. And by the time we were all huddled in the corner of the basement, um, you could hear everything going on. And we just got the fringes of it. Okay, now where was your house? In I lived at um, 28 Plummer Park. Okay. Here. Uh, it's like when you go through the main intersection, you can go straight, and Providence Road runs this way, mm -hmm. and then this road goes further over to a, another town, but we were right off the very first turn, and it was a housing development that actually just kind of grew and grew, but we had like this horseshoe road and we were on a dead-end street, uh, which was nice because we never had cars going by all the time. Mm -hmm. And we were um, getting ready for supper. And you could see all these clouds coming and everything. And my dad says, oh, he says, I better batten down the hatch not really knowing that there was a tornado coming at that particular moment. But by the time he got finished, everything in the yard was blowing around. The leaves were everywhere on these beautiful green trees. The winds were coming. And so a lot of things were getting shaken out of the trees and down onto the lawn. And he just happened to go around the corner to grab me. He says, it's time to come in. It's getting pretty bad here. And he looked up. And he went, oh, no. And he picked me up. I never entered a home so fast in my life. And my mom was upstairs, curling her hair, getting ready for tomorrow, putting in the rollers. And my dad said, well, you, can, you need to come down right now. Well, I'm almost done my hair. And he said to her, you're not going to have any hair in your head if you don't get down here. And she went, oh, like that. And we got down into the basement, and it was a full basement, concrete and everything. So it was a good place to be. But then all of a sudden, you could just hear everything just blowing around. And if sticks came by and they hit the house, you heard that. Um, and that lasted... I bet probably for a good maybe two minutes. Mm -hmm. And my dad went out when it was quiet and you could see everything moving away from us and going towards uh, Rockdale. And then it went around and I guess it came back uh, into Worcester again for wow. a short time. So <clears throat> may I ask you a question? First of all, Kathy, were you an only child at that time? Yeah. So you were the, the only in the house. Huh? I was the only in the house, yeah. Good to cat. So easy to corral the children. Yes. <laughs> easy to corral. So you were outdoor playing and your dad was. I was, and then, you know, you could see that it, the, 
the storm was coming. We didn't know there was a tornado in it at that point, but we could just see it come. And so my dad went out and just picked up a few things and put them in the garage because it was getting very, very windy. And I, he said, boy, this could be a bad storm, you know, mm -hmm. not knowing. And then he said, okay, he said, you can sit right here on the front steps and I will be right back to get you. And when he turned around, that's when he saw the tornado literally approaching. <clears throat> and I was out the front steps. Boy, I got picked up in the house so fast it wasn't funny. And I mean, I was like about preschool, well, early elementary school. Early elementary. And, um, my poor mom, she finally made it downstairs and he did not tell her what was coming. He just said, we need to get into the basement now. And he put, put us all right in the corner so that if anything did come, it would kind of go over us and not at us. So what did your dad do for a living? My dad worked at White Machine Works, all textile <coughs> machinery that they built and then they would send it down into the Carolinas for the companies down there to set up so they could produce yard goods and all kinds of different things. Um, but the reason I ask is he thought so quickly. A lot of people, probably people wouldn't have known what to do. My he was dad, just... you know what, my dad was like that. The whole family was like that. They grew up with, I call it, cures for any ailment. <laughs> self-sufficiency. Self totally self-sufficient. After the, after the, you guys come up out of the basement, do you remember going outside? Did your dad oh, let you go outside? My dad went out first and we waited like a minute and he came back in and he said, well, he said it was quite a storm. And of course I wanted to pop right out in it. And my mother said, what do you mean it was quite a storm? And so we came up from the cellar. My dad had put in this, I don't know what he made the, it opened up all the way. There were stairs in it, mm -hmm. but it was opened up wide so that bigger things could get put into the basement. Right. So he engineered all of that and poured his concrete, did the whole thing. So we were pretty well insulated. We were all below ground when it happened. And when he came out, he, you, you could hear him go, like, you know, oh my gosh. And so then he came to get us. He, he just suggested that we just stay on the sidewalks because we don't know what was in there. Oh gosh, it, it looked like most of the trees had lost 50% of their leaves because everything was just blown all over. Um, and so then he went and he turned on the television and the radio and the first thing he heard was the tornado had gone through and they were giving the route of how it traveled. Mm -hmm. He said, oh my gosh, he says that missed our house by maybe about a thousand feet. Wow. It came that close, but as soon as it did, it veered off and uh, went in the Grafton area. So very, I mean, one of the things that I, as I do these interviews, yeah. people talked about just the sheer randomness. Mm -hmm. the Out sheer, of the blue. It just appeared and then it disappeared. And and your house was speared and somebody mm -hmm. a few streets away, their house isn't. Yep. So, we, were, we were pretty lucky. I was down in the Plummer Park area, <clears throat> which is more away from all the traffic and everything. And it was a good area, plus there were also a lot of areas that you could go to if you did need protection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was one thing about it that was really nice. And all the neighbors were super close. Now, um, I, I also <coughs> remember you said you weren't going to St. Michael's at that time. Right. But you were an Episcopalian? Or yeah, what? I went to Trinity Episcopal Church in... in uh, in, in Whitesville. Yeah, yeah, it was in Whitesville. Okay. 
It's been a long time. I know the church is still there. <clears throat> and the church is still functioning. Yeah. Um, so, do you, one of the things that is a big part of the story of this church mm -hmm. is how all the other churches started helping. Mm -hmm. As soon as they heard that St. Michael's... Yes. I, rem I remember <clears throat> being in church. What, what they did when I was young, everybody went to the first half hour, which was like the main service. And then there were other things that would happen in the church, special information, meetings, or whatever. And during that time, all of the children went to Sunday school classrooms. And so they did, they did have um, areas for people at the time who were in the church that day. There were plenty of places to take refuge. Plus, they had a full in-ground cellar mm -hmm. thing. So, you know, that was a blessing right there. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of places didn't fare so well. Mm -hmm. There were some places you could see half the house was gone. Now, do you, do you remember if your church raised, helped raise money for St. Michael's? You know, they probably did, but I was so young at that point, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. But I know that there was a lot of help, and I remember seeing baskets starting to fill up at the church um, for anybody who needed anything. And if they move anybody who needed something, then make sure you take it. Um, you know, and that's what they did. So when you think about a church, you're thinking about a community that right. supports the community. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot they, of people... They were very, very supportive. Actually, at the time when I was growing up in Whitesville, they had the Congregational Church, the Methodist Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Episcopal Church, and the Catholic Church. And any time there was any big thing, uh, regardless of who came from what church, the churches would all band together. They, they were always about the community. Mm -hmm. So Grafton, mm -hmm. I know Grafton did get, you were living in Gra uh, Whitesville. I was in Whitesville, yeah. Whitesville yep. area. And so I know that was one of the towns that was awesome. Did yeah. you see anything in your town? or I mean, as a child, you're only seven years old. Was, so. There was some damage in different areas. The Hill Street area in Whitensville is happily named. <clears throat> and as soon as you got up higher and higher and then leveled off, you saw a lot more damage. Mm -hmm. uh, we were fortunate, and we were also fortunate that we had a full cellar. A lot of people didn't. But my dad said he was always going to get a house that had a full cellar so that he could make a workshop downstairs. And that's what he did. And that's why he also built that rampage. That you yeah. Were about. So, you know, it, it, was, it was interesting to see how all of everything that he thought about doing, he did, and how it all worked out. You know, where we actually had a really safe place to go. 